What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com and The Record. I'm your host, Art Stapleton, and we are in Jets week, Giants-Jets preseason finale, Saturday night at MetLife Stadium, 6 o'clock kickoff. We will see Aaron Rodgers and most, if not all, of the Jets starters, especially on offense. We will not, I believe, see the Giants starters really in any shape or form. Uh, I think... Brian Dable has seen what he wants to see from his starters this summer. I think maybe you'll see a couple rookies out there uh, to start. You know, maybe Deontay Banks and Trey Hawkins the third will play on defense. Jordan Riley up front, uh, but I don't believe we're going to see the Giants starters. Uh, I think Daniel Jones showed what he needed to show in the preseason on last Friday. When they played the Carolina Panthers, eight of nine on that first series, touchdown pass to Daniel Bellinger, three catches by Darren Waller, Paris Campbell with two catches, Isaiah Hodgins with a a nice catch of 20 yards. So I think the Giants offense is now focused on Dallas and September 10th. Uh, I believe the defense will be focused on that as well. Uh, So here we are. Cut day is... Less than a week away, and there are some decisions to be made. And what I like to do on the beat the week before is try to seek out some of the players who are you know younger, going through this on, for the first time, having to deal with the emotions of what cut day means, guys you've bonded with uh, for the last couple months, and now all of a sudden... You know, who knows if they're going to be in the locker room beyond next Tuesday. Uh, So that usually happens. But also in training camp, you try to find those gems, those hidden gems. Uh, Players who really have gone under the radar. I thought Jay Sean Corbin was someone like that, fit that bill. That's why I interviewed him for yesterday's podcast. I hope you listened to that one. And today I figured I would go with the last pick of the 2023 draft for the New York Giants, 254th overall safety out of Houston, Javarius Owens. Now, I didn't get a chance to speak to Gio really individually at all in camp and even back in the spring when he did his press conference at uh, Rookie Minicamp. Uh, it, you know, it, it's not that he was an afterthought, but there was this idea that he was pigeonholed into a special teams role. Well, Owens has really impressed since he's gotten on the field here in training camp. He got hurt with a little friendly fire. He'll explain that in our interview on the first day of training camp. So knocked him behind a little bit. Um, I found him to be a very engaging uh, rookie and a player in general. But sometimes things happen that you don't anticipate. And the lead into this interview with Javarius Owens is that I didn't know much of his backstory. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where we put in our re- interview request to give you a little behind the scenes uh, during practice. And yesterday I attempted to uh, get some guys, you know, who I haven't talked to in a while or at all, uh, put in a request for Darian Beavers, talk to him. We'll have that interview on a podcast later this week. Uh, and I inter- I requested Owens because I wanted to know more about him. He's really been coming on as of late, especially in the two preseason games. Uh, he's one of those guys who has flashed. Um, but uh, what I did not realize is that he's been playing with a heavy heart the last four months. And before I give you the details, I want you to see how it played out and hear how it played out in our interview because I was unaware uh, of the tragedy he and his family had to deal with back on draft night. And 
when he reveals it, I think you'll hear our uh, exchange. And again, I appreciate Gio sharing uh, those details for me, for our listeners, but also just in that moment, uh, not really knowing where the interview was going to go. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I can't imagine being uh, in his position now. So without any further ado, <clears throat> here's my interview with Javarius Owens, and then I'll be back to kind of fill in some of the blanks uh, that you may not have gotten in that interview because the interview was happening in real time, and I did not have the opportunity to be able to do any research whatsoever. Uh, but like I said, I, I feel for Javarius Owens and his family and in addition to all the football aspect of it, you'll see how it played out in our conversation uh, and how he revealed what he revealed and what he's been carrying with him emotionally uh, for the past four months. So one of the stories I'm working on is kind of the psychology of camp. Now, obviously, this is your first camp going through it, but yeah. just the ups and the downs. I mean, and you had you had the experience right off the bat of getting banged up early on. Yeah. How, how would you describe somebody if they said, what's the what's the mindset? What's the mentality when you you go through camp in the NFL? Uh, just trying to, you know, stay positive and realize that everybody are professionals here. So, you know, it's going to be ups and downs, definitely, of course. But just, you know, coming in as a rookie for First, first time, you know, I just want to try to do as much as I can, learn the playbook, you know, get comfortable in the system and things like that. So, you know, it's trying to push out the negatives and, you know, when a bad play happens or something bad happens, you know, like I did, I got banged up off rip, but, you know, it gave me another it's chance to just be able to be in the playbook more. So, you know, just to and watch film and just see how guys is doing things, the spots we're supposed to be in and, you know, blitz paths and things like that. So just trying to stay positive throughout the whole thing and just keep learning. Now you come into a camp and you, you want to prove yourself you're a oh, late round pick you, yes, you know you, you think you have to earn things how hard does it take me inside the idea of you know you're hurt you, you can't play but to wait until you can finally get out there how do you fight the idea that you're not falling too far behind yeah. in that quest to, to earn your spot uh it's, it's not a hard hard thing at, at all you know everybody has everybody has something to prove you know everybody wants to make the team make the team better so you know that's that's just you know that's a base thing ground ground principle but just knowing knowing your abilities you know as as a person knowing that you're supposed to be here so you know never just got wavering that's just like a confidence and just knowing who you are type of thing so you know just knowing that it's just a little setback so you know stay in the training room get healthy as quick as you can and just bounce back you know injuries are something we can't control so you never try to dawn too into it because that's how you know you, you fall into a little hole and especially when you get unlucky yeah I mean, what, what was the play remind me again what it was, was the just play? a little crazy playing the uh, back of the end zone you know me and my other say that we didn't see, see each other so when the receiver got out the way i just took the uh, knees straight to the groin and it just swelled up on me real bad couldn't lift my leg and stuff so so you were out for about you were out for about a good week yeah. week and a half, right? Yeah. Um, now that you're back out there and you're getting to be in the stadium, uh, you know, last week, what was that like? Man, I was, see the smile on your face because, already. Because you know it was crazy. It's just you know everything you know rookie year is just like you going through it your first time, so everything's just kind of like dream come true. So you know first time being being able to be in a stadium around the guys, you know everybody's cheering for you and happy. So you know it's just good vibes and like I said, just trying to go out there and execute to the best of your ability. You know, not really trying to overthink about. It's just football at the end of the day. So just trying to, I try to like stay in that little happy space right there when I'm on the field for sure. Tell me but, your story a little bit. You know, we talked to you around draft time, but, but you know, what, what does Gio bring to this team? Who do you think you, you can, you know, you can be for the Giants? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I'm just trying, trying to be uh, whatever they need me to be inside of the system. You know, I feel like I'm a toolbox guy. I could do a lot. And I think uh, Coach Wink, uh, he kind of demands a lot out of his uh, back end and secondary. So, you know, just being able to blitz off the edge, play man to man, you know, be able to play in the post, play in the box and just things like that. So, you know, I kind of want to make sure I can do all of those things and just keep sharpening my tools at the end of the day. You know, like when I was at Houston, like we was able to do a lot of those stuff. So it's nothing like just too, too new to me as far as just being able to play more than one position. So I feel like that's going to be fun. And, you know, I like the guys in the room, like they're very supportive and very, you know, helpful, just helping me adjust to these things. And okay, he want, he likes it like this. So, you 
know, go like this and just like everybody's helpful. So it ultimately just makes it easier, you know, especially your rookie. You don't know what to expect out of out of someone right. out of the defense. So, you know, it's a lot of helpful guys in the room that's helping me through this process. This rookie class, I mean, you guys got you, you have guys making splash plays all over the place and, the, and not even guys, you know, you expect that from yeah. the first rounder, Deontay and second rounder and John Michael. But then, yeah. you know, Hyatt's splashing and even Most even tough. Jordan Riley splashing yeah. and yeah. Hawkins. And how do you how do you, you know, weigh that? And does that give you confidence knowing that this team is willing to yes, allow most, rookies to come in and, and most, have a big impact? Most definitely. It's just really just, you know, not letting a round define you. You know, they just got to think they brought you in for a reason. Like, no matter the reason, they brought you in for a reason. So just prove them right while you're proving yourself right as well. So, you know, I feel like all our rookies have, have that confidence. And like I said, it's a bunch of guys in the room that allow us to embrace that confidence. Like, they tell you, you know, go, make a, go be confident right there. Like, I know he's saying, you know, but have confidence when you step on the field and things like that. And, you know, it's a lot of guys that you know stay out there and help help watch film and things like that so we can play faster so it's not just looking like a bunch of rookies just you know <laughs> going out busting their heads on fire so you know they definitely keep us calm and things like that but I feel like it's just the confidence in knowing like like I said originally like they bought you here for a reason so just believe in that and believe in yourself. How do the veterans help you? What do they what do they talk about? Just with everything and it's not even you know like I had a lot of off the field things like when I first got here just you know that I had to deal with like personal things and you know just being around me just showing me like you you know, these are a bunch of guys I, I didn't know know them from from anybody, right. but you know they embraced me very very early on. You know, a lot of, especially my back end guys. You know, they backed me on a lot of things and just sat down, talked to me. You know, when they didn't have to, like they don't they don't know me. Like you said, I was a late round driver. They don't even know if I'm being in the room the next day. Like, but they looked at me like a brother and just you know any advice I needed, things like that. Like they they was there for me, so it's kind of easy to get on board with guys like that so when you say when you say that often is it just mostly uh, adjusting to, to NFL life and stuff uh, it, was, it was it was a lot of stuff but uh, like draft day uh, I had lost my brother on draft day so that was just like the draft night was just like the craziest like night of my life you know it's like the best thing in the world just happened then it's like the worst thing like, like I was just distraught and you know trying to leave your family in a time like that was just crazy so my condolences i, I didn't know that yes, um it, so that that is something when I mean, you came here i mean you had to be here a week later right so yeah that's very difficult was, to leave was, home to get here yeah it, it was it was real hard and you know like early on i'm not like it's something like you you don't want to leave so but like i got a great support system at, at home as well so you know they just like if you don't leave, you're never going you never gonna go down there. You know that. So just giving me the courage, you know, just to know like that they had my mama and my sister while I was down while I was down there, you know, like yeah. I felt comfortable with my family and stuff and like my mom's here with me right now. So, you know, just okay. keeping keeping family close and just making sure everybody's, you know, okay is the best you can, you know, it's it's just something, you know, you can't really weigh in on until you go through something yeah. like that so you want to tell me about your brother how close were you guys uh it's like a basically like my father figure like that that's my guy you know and it's crazy because like uh what was his name zara owens yes sir and he got a little niece and all he just real laid back cool guy he's like life life for the party though like when he when he know you like life for the party cracking jokes all the time like he's my guy but like he's like i said you know he's like my father figure so you know He's like one of the only people that kind of like wanted this for me like more than I wanted it for myself. And you know, like in order to get here, you obviously have to want this like right. more than anybody. So it was like seeing him like he's at every game. I was at Juco, he sliding to the Juco games, taking on work, all this. So like, that was like the hardest part, like of just knowing that, you know, like that wasn't going to be there. So like, I was kind of just like skeptical, like even like stepping on the field the first day of practice, like head just running. Cause it's like, I know, like, I plan as soon as I get done, it's like, oh, bro, I just woo woo like, I, you yeah. know, so just not having that outlet, you know, it's just, it's, it's going to be an adjustment, but, you know, like I said, I got a great support system around me, so, you know, definitely think you better so, push, push I, it. I would imagine anytime you step on that stadium, anytime you step on this field, it's going to be something for Yeah, most def. Definitely um, try to bring light to him, for sure. Oh, you know, you you get into this point. You guys get seasons coming. I yes, mean, that, how do you deal with the emotions of that? The idea that you know this is this is going to become a team where it's you know ninety to fifty three, and then you got guys on the practice squad. Yeah. Have you even asked some of the veterans what that's like, and how do you uh, deal with the emotions over the next week or so? Right, right now, like I said, like it's it's so much and it's so complicated right now in this defense. Like I'm really just like trying to control what I can control you know like we're worried about as long I feel like if you take care of 
you know, project A, everything else will fall in place. So like I said, I'm just been trying to nail into the playbook, you know, like little small, small things that I'm that I've been missing or something like that, or you know, something new comes up, okay, how he wants y'all to play that, so whoop you whoop, okay. When y'all read informations, like once now I got the playbook down, it's okay, so when you see this formation with you and you in the post, how do you play it like this? How do you play it like that? So right. just trying to, just I'm really just trying to be a sponge right now, you know, not really focusing on that because I feel like it kind of slows you down. It just creates extra stress and, you know, things like that in your life. So I'm just, you know, day by day, just trying to control what I can control right now. Uh, last thing, Saturday night, I would imagine, you know, who knows how, you know, what veterans are playing, but probably be out, out on that field early yeah, for you. Most no, are you aware that they're going to start Aaron Rodgers to start that game? Yeah. The Jets? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. What, what would, what's that like? I mean, do you even think of that? The idea of if you're out there on the field and and yeah, the Hall I mean, of Fame quarterback yeah, is out there, what? Most of it, 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 it'll be a blessing for, for sure. You know, to, to be able to share the share the field with a guy like that, obviously. But you know, we're here to play football, so you know, we gonna try to do do what we can and, and ultimately stop him early. So, cool. There's a Geo. Thank you. Appreciate that. it. Bro. Appreciate that, my guy. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Special thanks to Javarius Owens for joining me after practice on Tuesday. Uh, and again, as I said to him in the moment, uh, I offer my sincere condolences to him and his family. Uh, just a terrible, terrible tragedy to have to deal with. Um, so here are some of the details that uh, we were that I didn't have at my disposal when I talked to him uh, for that interview. Uh, less than eight hours after the Giants drafted Gio, his older brother, Zyron, was killed in a shooting in Oklahoma City. He was 31 years old. Such a terrible situation. Uh, police were still looking, as of last check, were still looking for any details involved. Uh, but such a tragedy. And, you know, you could hear it in his voice as he talked about it. He's got his mom here. Uh, living with him here, he didn't want to leave his family. Um, you know, just some raw emotions in that situation. And I, I, I'll say it again: I, I did not know any of those details as we started talking. Um, but obviously, sometimes interviews take a turn, and uh, that turn, you know, took place because of what Geo was willing to to reveal about what he had been going through. And you never know what players are dealing with, uh, young players, old players, away from the field. So now when you put that in perspective as to what he's been able to do this preseason, going out and getting hurt, hurting his groin on the first day of training camp on a friendly fire, a fluke, pl a fluke play. And then when you consider now, Javarius Owens has played the most snaps in the preseason for the Giants, 79. And he has the fifth highest defensive grade, according to Pro Football Focus, on the team. There's a lot of talk about the 53 and which guys will make it, which guys won't. To me, Javarius Owens is going to be on the 53-man roster. Uh, he's got the type of height, weight, and speed and the production in preseason games that as Brandon Brown told us the other day, assistant general manager, waiver claims, especially at the cut, cut down day, are three to one in favor of defense versus offense. So if Javarius Owens is on the wire, I believe someone will take a chance and, and claim him. So for the Giants' perspective, I think he's got a role on this team. I think he'll be a special teamer if he's active on game day and then work his way into the rotation on the back end. Clearly, the Giants like what they have in him. Wink Martindale has mentioned Gio several times in terms of what he's brought to the table. And then when you put all of that into perspective, the emotional component of here's this young guy who loses his 31-year-old brother hours after he has the moment of his life and gets drafted uh, to the New York Giants and to the NFL, um, Boy, I, I can't imagine having to deal with uh, that uh, for his family, for him, the emotions, such a high, and then just an incredible, tragic low. Um, you know, I have all the respect in the world right now for, for Javarius Owens and what he's going through. Again, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Uh, maybe not the news and what we discussed halfway through, 
Uh, obviously, you're not going to enjoy hearing the pain uh, of someone and what they've had to deal with. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, Owens is certainly somebody you want to root for in this situation, considering what he's dealt with. I thought it was interesting that he, he said all the veterans in the room have really bonded with him, helped him uh, along the way. And at first you hear that and you think it's about football. Uh, and it really had nothing to do with football. I think the Giants, right from jump, have really done what they could to help him emotionally. You know, let's let's be honest. Rookies coming into this league, regardless of where they're coming from, have to deal with the ups and downs and the psychological impact of what it's like to be in the NFL, the numbers game, knowing that your job's at risk every day, uh, knowing that... There are no guarantees, especially for someone who was selected 254th overall in the NFL draft, seventh round, last pick for the Giants. And to know that he's dealing with something, like he said, it, it, the loss of his father figure. Um, all I can say is rest in peace, Zyron Owens, and uh, all the best to Gio and his family and... Hopefully over the next couple of weeks, he gets to enjoy more highs than the incredibly low low that they had to deal with and the anguish that they had to deal with back uh, in late April, early May, and are still dealing with to this day. So Javarius Owens, I think he uh, has a good shot at being on this team. And I think at this point, um, it'll be very interesting to see how things play out on the back end. You heard him talk about uh, Wink Martindale's defense and what he brings to the table. I think there's no doubt that the Giants like what they saw in college, and he's another one of those rookies brought here, maybe didn't have the production or wasn't playing at the level of a Power 5 conference, and then now... He's here, and he's gotten this opportunity. I think he will be on the field on Saturday night against the Jets, and what better way for Javarius Owens uh, to honor his brother and his family than to go out there and, and play well on Saturday night and give himself the best opportunity to be here as a Giant uh, this time next week. Appreciate you being all in. We'll be back tomorrow with another show. As I teased, we have... Uh, Darian Beavers, and still to come, my conversation with Paris Campbell about what it's like for a young, uh, for a new player to come into a situation on a one-year deal with a young family, uh, and what you deal with, uh, all the emotions that go are involved in that, and all the steps that you have to do to kind of get acclimated to a new city, a new team, uh, and you know, how that affects your kids. Namely, for Paris, it was his five-year-old son that he had some interesting things to tell me about. We'll have that hopefully on a show uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll try to get that together. So as always, appreciate you being all in and we're all in for you. We'll check you next time.